What to do, what to do, what to do. Welcome back to the channel, baby. Yeah. What to do, what to do, what it do, Half and Jay family. Welcome back to the channel, baby. Yes. It's your boy, Half. And your girl, Jay. And we back with, with another, another reaction, reaction video. video. <laughs> Alright y'all, we back once again Welcome back to the channel Yes, welcome back, welcome back uh, We're going to jump right into this one So let them know who we're going to react to today The Democratic Party doesn't respect black people Alright And this is by Jesse Lee Peterson Okay You know what I'm saying uh, On the Fallen State um, uh, YouTube channel And if you guys have not had a chance to check out our Full interview that we did with Jesse Lee Peterson I want y'all go over there to his channel On the Fallen State Go check it out for us, or you can go to our community page yeah. where we posted it, and y'all go check it out there too. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty interesting deep <laughs> conversation, though. So, but anyway, let's jump right into it, man. But before we do, everybody else out there who has not yet subscribed to the Chizano, yes. Bam! Go ahead, hit the subscribe button. Yes. Tell your pop notifications on. Yes. Like and share this video. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm. And comment down below, baby. Come, come and join the squad, man. Yes, Half and Jay. Yes. Plus, we already kicking kick off. off. What? Good vibes, baby. baby. Good vibes. Mm. Here we go. <laughs> this is going to be funny right here. I noticed, and you can correct me, man, I'm seeing it wrong. I know that the Democratic representative, the party itself, um, they, as I mentioned earlier, they don't respect blacks. They think that blacks are not capable enough to do it, to do it for themselves. So they offer them affirmative action and reparations and things like that. They think that the blacks uh, take, can't take care of themselves. So they try to, they're lowering the standards in order to get into a white university. They are now telling the blacks that they don't have to take the test because they can't pass the white man's test. They, uh, they think that the blacks uh, rather than having a father and mother in the home, they offer them government. They don't believe that the blacks are capable. And what I don't understand about that, and, uh, and since you're uh, 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 involved in strategizing for them, why, what I don't understand, why do the blacks accept themselves being treated that way? Like they just can't do it. They're luring the whole, even to, to get in certain jobs and things, they're luring the standards for the blacks so that they can get it, otherwise they won't get it. I don't understand why the blacks put up with that. There's, those type of things are just kind of balancing the scales from things that happened decades before. So as you know, slavery happened. It wasn't that long ago, as you know. Over 150 years ago. And my mother, not my grandma. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> right. Okay. The pandemic wasn't that long ago. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The, the NBA Finals wasn't that long ago. <laughs> but slavery, that was a long time right. ago. Damn. Okay. It wasn't that long ago, as you know. Over 150 years ago. And my mother, not my grandmother, my mom went to a segregated school. So it's not that long ago. I did too. Okay, so you understand. It's not like this is but distant. It, but, but black were better off then. They didn't, they didn't beg. They yeah, didn't blame. Let me, let's see. So back in after World War II, there was a period in the United States, about 20 to 30 years, where when people came back from the war, they were given home loans that they had no interest or didn't even have to pay back. They were given cars. They were given free college education. They were given all of these things that purposely excluded black people. So there was a time in this country where white people got handouts, but we didn't call it that back at the time, you know, the GI Bill, all of those funds, we didn't call it a handout, we, get, we called it an opportunity. And when people look back on that time, they look back on that time, a lot of white people as a very happy time because they got a leg up in the country, they got a fresh start, they got the money and the support that they needed to build the generational wealth that they have today. And black people didn't have access to it. They were literally purposely excluded because of racism, because of Jim Crow, because of all of these things that- My grandfather got it. Just wanted to throw that out there though, so. She not, she not accurate on that because my grandfather got that. So anyway, let's go. 
literally purposely excluded because of racism, because of Jim Crow, because of all of these things that purposely left us out and, and did not give us access. Oh, and by the way, my grandfather was from Chattanooga, Tennessee, too, down south. So I throw that out there, too. Because of Jim Crow, because of all of these things that purposely left us out and, and did not give us access to the same type of help that white people did. Where did you get that information from? Because it's not true. Where it's did you true. get that from? The GI Bill, you should look it up. I know black men who went to the military, they got a GI Bill too. It wasn't just the white. Uh, I've heard, I, I have family members who mm. went to the military, they got the GI Bill. Yeah. When they got out, they were able to go to school and they were able Some to purchase were, but a lot they of were able were to purchase a home and, and things like that. And they were black, right? Mm. So I'm trying to figure out where you get that information from because it's, it's not just, true. It's just true. We can agree to disagree. But I, it grew up on a, I grew up in Alabama, mm -hmm. when the Jim Crow law existed, and that what you said wasn't true. Yeah, my family Black right people were doing better doing the Jim Crow law than they are today because they weren't begging and blaming, and the country didn't have to lower the standards to let them the standards. to let them in. It's not lowering the standards; it's giving people access. We know right now, literally recently in Texas, there was a job posting that went out where people were sending clone resumes, were same exact resume, you just put a black name on it and a white name on it, and the white people were still getting the job or getting called for interviews when the black name wasn't. Like, this is 2023. So, you know, racism exists. Why would a company want to hire a person with a black name? They know that it's trouble. Why is that trouble? Be because <laughs> when, when the blacks change their name to black names, they're saying out loud, well, we hate white folks. We're not going to work with them. We're that's not going to get along. And so I would never hire anyone with a black name. Well, that's biased. And because that's I know that you're bringing in trouble. This person is already want me to get along with my white employees and things like that. Well, that's internalized and I, racism. That, I wouldn't hire that. That's because, your choice. You know what I mean? Bias so why would, a company, bias. why would a company want to hire someone that you know already is going to bring trouble? That's not true. I have a, I'm Nigerian. I have a Nigerian name. Amani Onyoha is But you a grew up in America, though. You didn't grow up in Nigeria. And there's a lot of black people who have ethnic names who grew up in America. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's just funny. It's just, that part is just funny. <laughs> he said, Why would you hire somebody with that name? Right. <laughs> he said, But you live in America. That's, that's trouble. <laughs> right. Oh. They gonna be able to get along with my wife. <laughs> He's like, This thing is stupid, man. Jesse, you was a fool, man. I'm telling you, boy. You was a fool, man. You didn't grow up in Nigeria. And there's a lot of black people who have ethnic names who grew up in America. So what's the difference? Um, but why would a company want to hire a black with a black name? Why not? No, I'm asking. I just told you why, why not because fit, it's trouble. Why is it trouble? Black people are trouble? Is that your When they change their name to abnormal names like black names, <laughs> They are saying they are angry. They are. Do you uh, think, we don't change our name. They, they, last time I checked, I didn't choose my name. I, I know, was but your my mother, your folks are from a different country, so my, my of course, from it, here. but your father's from there, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's of course they are. They're gonna have a different name. I'm talking about the blacks who were Americans and they had American names at one time. Mm -hmm. You you believe that? Oh, so you think that it's okay that? The reason that you are a Democrat and, and no problem with it, you're okay with them lowering the standards for the blacks? They're not lowering the standards for what the blacks. What would you call it? Because if you are not included. qualified. If you're not qualified, then you won't get the job. But, but if you have the qualifications. But the qualified the person resume, is the person that can pass the test. If you can pass not the, the one test. that can't pass the test. There's a lot of black people who have had affirmative action who have passed the test and are very educated. They have master's degrees, but they, they have high GPAs. But how would you know that, test. though, since you know that they only get in, into these schools based on color? They're not and only so they, getting into the schools. The, the standards have been lowered so the blacks can get in. So you have to assume that all the blacks are just getting in because, not because of qualification, but because of affirmative action. It's just not true. It's not true? It's not true. Okay. Um, you believe that there are benefits to having a more progressive leadership that is willing to change the law for working class people, such as raising the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. um, are you okay? If you had a business, your own business, would you be okay with the with the um, 
the government telling you in your own private business that you have to raise the minimum wage? I have my own private business because I'm a partner at this firm, so I do own a portion of the firm. And we unionized our staff. We told them, hey, y'all should unionize. And we did their union negotiation in two days. We gave them good wages. They got medical. And we are bound by that union contract, and it goes up every year, and we have to reaffirm it, and we did it in this fund. You wouldn't have done it had not you got a union? You uh, wouldn't have naturally union. done that? Yeah, we told them to unionize. No, if they had not gotten a union, mm -hmm. you would not have paid them for what they were worth? I still, We were still paying them really well. We just wanted just to have that partnership with the union to hold, hold us accountable. We were already paying them well. They already had great wages. So when it came down to negotiate, we ratified our union contract in two days. It didn't take long because we had already been <laughs> providing the things that they would have wanted. So and you, yeah. you say you needed the union to hold you responsible? We don't need them to, but we're not afraid of it. What's but, the but why, if you're going to do the responsible thing, why did you need a union? I don't quite We didn't that. need it, but our staff, people want it. Like, people like to be unionized. They like to have the backing of a union. Um, so, yeah, they're just, they're here, there are partners in it, and it's working out great. But I don't quite understand, because if you guys were going to do the right thing anyway, and mm -hmm. the staff knew that, why would they want a union? Because now they have to pay union we dues. Told them to, you know, now they, they have to pay to union dues. And they're they may get a raise, but that raise is going to go toward the union dues, which benefit the union to go to the Democratic representatives to help support support the Democrats to get what they want to get. Yeah, we can be transparent. Union dues are 0.08% of, of our staff's paycheck. And that's something that they wanted to do. Again, they formed the union. They voted on it. That's what they wanted to do because they wanted that type of protection. And we were cool with it. It doesn't cost them much. It probably cost them $20 a paycheck, but you got the whole backing of a huge union behind you, which is great for them. And they wanted that, and we was cool with it. That's amazing. Um, you want to stop? Oh, you want to stop union busting? Why? Why would you union bust? <laughs> why? Would, why do you want to stop union busting? Because if people want access to better wages, health care, time off, sick leave, they should be able to have that. And busting the union, it oftentimes interferes with their ability to have access to those things. For instance, if the corporation themselves or the company or whoever doesn't want to give you things that you need, like sick days, <laughs> basic things, we all get sick, none of us are perfectly immune, then you should be able to have access to those things and don't stand in the way of an entity that's trying to provide those type of protections for workers. All of my life, I worked for different companies before I started my own thing. Mm -hmm. And I never worked for a company where they didn't give you time off. Mm -hmm. I was just about to say that. I promise you, I have never heard of a job that doesn't give you time off or sick pay. Mm -hmm. If there's one out there, my bad. I never heard of it. But as far as I'm concerned, every time I had a job where I worked at, they always gave you time off and they always gave you sick pay. Right. So, I don't know what the heck she talking about. I don't think she do neither. <laughs> <laughs> but here we go. I started my own thing mm -hmm. and I never worked for a company where they didn't give you time off mm -hmm. vacation time sick time mm -hmm. and and if you need to be off they'll let you go and take care of your business where did that idea come from that companies don't do that and you need a union there's some well unions have been here long before either of us yeah I know that, right. so yeah. <laughs> a long, long, long time, time ago um so and the america was again better back then when we had union strength because a lot of the sneaky things that some corporations or some businesses do like i said i'm a business owner myself so i understand that there are some businesses and corporations who are cool with giving people pay time off you know bereavement all of that but then there are some people who try to skip corners like um we had the big thing with palestine ohio and the labor workers they were not given paid sick days like why in 2003 23 are we not giving people paid sick days so there are some industries that don't do the basic things that you grew up on and that i've known most of my jobs to offer some people don't so in those instances where we know that those are basic things that everybody needs then you should be able to fight for those things most of the time the employees who that are complaining mm -hmm. are the ones that you, you should have work working for you anyway all sometimes they, they show up late they halfway do a job and they're complaining. And the reason I know that because I work for a different company, but I used to work for a union mm -hmm. and we were trained to go to the employee that was 
complaining mm -hmm. about the about the job situation, not showing up for work on time or not coming to work a lot, and get them to help get you into the company so you can convince the other employees to join the union. And it's not that the union care about the people, the union care about the money. Mm -hmm. And they'll live in high on the hall while the employees uh, are paying their, paying their salary, paying their, by, by way of union do. It's not like they care about them, they just care about the money and the perceived power that they're getting. Do you think that unions care about you? Sometimes. No, they don't. Yeah. I'm, I'm I used to work for, uh, work for I feel you. Two things don't. can be right at the same time. You ever heard that phrase? What's that? Two things can be right at the same time. No. There are some people who are in unions for the power and the money, and then at the same time, there are some employees who need protection and better wages. Two things can be true at the same time. But the ones that say they need it are the ones that should be fired anyway. Sometimes. Right. Sometimes you know what I mean? <laughs> Amazing. And so oh, the, the union in the older days, I think they may have meant well, but the unions today are no good. Mm -hmm. They're just one-sided union for the Democratic Party, and they can care less about the people. I'm not for the union. That's just I work for them, and I know the thinking of the unions. And they go out and they, they convince the people, you need more money, you need this, and you need that. And when the people think that they're going to get more, they'll afford, but they end up getting nothing. Mm -hmm. and, and the, but there are some good unions out there. I never worked for one myself, um, but my mother, uh, she retired, you know what I mean, from the government, mm -hmm. and she was working, uh, they had a union with them. Mm -hmm. And I, she always told me good things about their union. Okay. So I don't know what the name of the union was or you know whatever the case may be, but mm -hmm. you know she always said that they, there was a good union. So I, I'm, I'm sure there's some good ones out there, but I'm, doing, I'm sure there's bad ones as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you just got, Take your pick. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like a hit and miss right. sometimes, you know? Think that they're going to get more, they'll afford, but they end up getting nothing. Mm -hmm. it, it's the union. It's the union that does it. He said, those who need the <laughs> union need, need to be fired. <laughs> those of us coming in <laughs> late, coming late right. complaining about everything. Right. You know what I'm saying? Jesse Lee, man, is, is a funny yeah. dude, man. Like, he seriously. Is. like. And since we had the opportunity to actually meet him in person, mm -hmm. um, he's a very cool, down to earth, right. humble gentleman, man. He is. You know, uh, yes. very funny, mm -hmm. um, very polite, mm -hmm. uh, makes you feel at home. Right. You know, uh, but of course, you know, when we're on the outside looking in and we're seeing videos, and stuff like this, you kind of judge by what you see. You know he looks so serious. Right, and, yeah. right, right. You know what I mean? But I'm telling y'all, trust us. When you there <laughs> in person, he's a totally different person, man. Totally he makes you person. feel really comfortable. Right, right, right. So, um, of course, unless you a pastor who's, you know, um, preaching the word of God, but then you're, not doing biblical things. Right. You know, and that's when you're going to see the real right. Jesse Lee Peters to come out. You know what I'm saying? So, but anyway, man, we hope you guys definitely enjoyed that one. You know, the Democratic Party doesn't respect the black people. Uh, let us know what y'all thought about it, what your, what your uh, opinion is on that. Yes. Anything you want to add? No. All right, so we're going to jump through some shout outs. Let's get it. Okay. First shout out goes to. That one swag kid. What's up, that one swag kid? That's dope. I like mm -hmm. that. That one swag kid. Shout out to you. Hope you definitely enjoyed that reaction. Let us know what you thought about it. Comment down below and come back and join us for some more reactions. Yes. Second shout out goes to Silent Mentor. What's up, Silent Mentor? Silent Mentor. We need a mentor too, huh? Wouldn't you like to have a mentor? Yes. We need a mentor. <laughs> so if anybody else out there that's willing to be our mentor, hit us up. You know what I'm saying? A good one though. That's really awesome, good <laughs> stuff, and you know what I mean. I know, you know. But anyway, we love y'all, man. Yes, we do. Peace and hair grease, mm -hmm. with a little bit of a uh, got to be. <sighs> <laughs> ah! We out this thing though, y'all. Yes. <laughs> Peace. Peace. <laughs>